Hey guys, it's Needage. Welcome back to Simple Biology and our course on medical terminology. Today we are still continuing with chapter one and we're going to be doing lecture four, which is body systems. Now, if you know anything about health, uh, this will be just a review for you. But, you know, if you need anything cleared up, hopefully this will clear this up for you. So this video should be pretty quick, pretty simple. All right, let's get into it. So the first body system is the integumentary system. Now, this picture is, in my opinion, just a little bit too much for the integumentary system because this is uh, more or less a picture of a bunch of systems working together. You have your uh, muscular system and the muscles here, but it, it, gives you, it gives you the main premise. So what is the integumentary system? The integumentary system protects the body by being the first line of defense against different microorganisms and diseases. It, it uh, regulates your skin temperature, so if you're feeling too hot, you know, you'll start sweating and that's going to cool you off. And if you're feeling too cold, it's going to start pumping more blood and trying to make you hotter. Uh, it provides sensory information, you know, whenever you're cooking or something and you put your hand on the hot stove and you pull it away, you know, that's that's giving the, that's your integral entry system telling your nervous system that, hey, you shouldn't touch that. It's a little bit hot. And then it also produces vitamin D, you know, if you ever talk about going outside, you're getting that vitamin D. So that's uh, the job of the integral entry system. Next, we're going to move on to the skeletal system. Now, I know this picture is a little bit uh, iffy because you might think muscular system because it's all red, but it's the integumentary, it's, excuse me, it's the uh, skeletal system. You have uh, all your skeleton here. So what, is, what does the skeletal system do? Well, first and foremost, it provides support and shape to the body. So, you know, when you stand up and you look at yourself in the mirror, what is giving you that shape? What is making you you? What is making you look like you? It is your skeletal system. It's what gives your body the shape of a body. You know, and then it also protects the body's internal organs and tissues, you know, for, for and, uh, I don't know about teenage girls, but teenage boys, you know, if you're ever messing around, horsing around with your friends, and you get punched in the ribs, well, why isn't your lung just immediately imploding? Because you have your ribs right there. Your ribs are protecting your lungs from getting destroyed by your friend who's goofing off and punching you in the ribs. Uh, it also produces red uh, blood cells in the body, you know. Uh, this can be thought about uh, when kids have leukemia or cancer. Uh, they always, they sometimes have bone marrow transplants. Bone marrow is what produces red blood cells in the body. And it also stores mil minerals like uh, in, in the body, like calcium. If you ever think about your parents saying, oh, you have to drink milk so your bones will be strong, milk has a lot of ca uh, calcium. And since milk has a lot of calcium, it's going to keep your bones strong and prevent them from breaking. Next, we're going to move on to the muscular system. Well, the muscular system is pretty straightforward. You know, it allows for voluntary and involuntary movement of the body. Voluntary movement would be like, you know, if you pick up something, that's your muscular system. Your muscular system is allowing you to pick up something. When you're in, in the, when you're after you work out or something and you grab your water bottle and you drink water, that's your muscular system allowing you to do that. And also involuntary bodily movements. You know, when you're sitting down, your heart is beating. You're not telling your heart to beat. You're not making your heart say, all right, here's the first beat, here's the second beat. That is something that's completely involuntary, but that is also your muscular system. And it also produces heat in the body through movement. Uh, go back to working out. Whenever you're working out, you start sweating and you start um, you start feeling hot. You know, you might want to, if you're wearing a jacket when you work out, you might want to take off your jacket because you're feeling a little bit hot. That is because whenever your muscular system moves, it generates heat. You know, whenever you go to the gym and you do like bicep curls and then you touch your bicep, it might feel a little bit hot. That's because your muscular system is producing that heat. Next, you have the nervous system. Now, the nervous system is vastly, vastly complex, but the easiest way to put it is it translates messages about sensory stimuli between the brain and the other parts of the body. So go back to when you touch that hot plate whenever you're making food. Your integumentary system is what's getting that feeling, but there's also the nervous system. The nervous system is what tells you that that thing is hot. You should not go touch it again. So it's really hard to explain the uh, interactions between systems but it's the 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 basic way to say it is it just helps transmit messages you know transmits messages about pain you know if you have a headache that's your nervous system saying oh my head hurts etc etc so you want to make sure that you understand the basics of every system but as we move on we're going to talk about more interactions between systems and stuff like that 
Next, you have a, a, your endocrine system. Now, this is the endocrine system of a male and a female. The real difference is in a female, you have an ovary, and in the male, you have testes. Uh, and your endocrine system produces hormones that regulate bodily functions, such as mood, you know, if you're feeling sad and you cry, that's your endocrine system is doing that. Though That's your endocrine system releasing hormones that go to your brain that allow you to cry. You don't just cry because you uh, are feeling happy, you cry because you're feeling sad. And that's because you have hormones that are making you cry and telling your uh, conscience to cry. You know, you also have metabolism whenever you eat you know, a big cake, a piece of cake after going uh, out to dinner, why don't you just gain, like, 10 pounds? It's because your metabolism, it's because your endocrine system is metabolizing and getting rid of the negative consequences of eating that cake. It also helps the growth of different cells and tissues and reproductive function and development. Your endocrine system helps to make sure that in a female, the eggs are fertile and the sperm, all, and in males, it makes sure that the sperm can go and fertilize an egg. So next you have your respiratory system. Now your respiratory system transports oxygen via blood, uh, uh, via blood to organs and tissues of the body. Now that's correct and incorrect. Really, what the respiratory system does is when you breathe in, you take it, you take this oxygen. And it goes into your lungs, and in your lungs there's a place for gas exchange, where the oxygen goes into the blood, and then the blood, which is part of the cardiovascular system, takes it and provides nutrients to the body. So, in that same sense, in that gas exchange, it also helps get rid of carbon dioxide via the lungs. So in that place of gas exchange, your body will give oxygen and take carbon dioxide and then you're going to breathe when you exhale you're going to breathe out carbon dioxide and that's the job of the respiratory system also your respiratory system helps to filter uh, different airborne pathogens and pollutants from the respiratory tract you know if you breathe in something that your body doesn't want to have inside what are you going to do you're going to cough that's the job of the respiratory system your respiratory system is going to cough and get rid of whatever is stuck in your throat it also helps to maintain the proper ph balance of blood now that's in interaction between the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system but you know it's not just one or the other the respiratory system does its job the cardiovascular system does its job and the respiratory system plays a role in maintaining the proper ph of blood next speaking of the devil cardiovascular system now what does your cardiovascular system do it pumps blood uh, it plum pumps blood and that blood contains oxygen and other nutrients around the body so you breathe in, respiratory system, you have gas exchange, the oxygen goes into the blood, then it becomes the job of the cardiovascular system. That blood goes all around the body and helps to make sure you don't die. And it also carries carbon dioxide to the lungs and carries other waste to uh, other waste uh, also to, to be expelled from the lungs and kidneys. Now, that goes to interactions between systems, between your respiratory system and in your kidneys, your cardiovascular system. You take blood from... Uh, you take waste from your body and bring it to your kidney via blood, and then it goes to your urinary system, and you pee it all out. Same way, you're going to take waste from your body into the lungs, and you're going to exhale carbon dioxide. So, it's really hard to get a grip of just what one system does without including, you know, two or three other systems. But, really, you just want to know the main premise of these systems. And we're going to dive into the nitty-gritties about all these systems, but this is just a basic bare-bones uh, overview. So next, you have your lymphatic system. So your lymphatic system works with the immune system protect, to protect the body from pathogens, and also helps maintain the proper balance of lympho lymphatic fluid and blood throughout the body. Now, this is something for a lot of students to comprehend, but there isn't just the only uh, fluid that's going through your body isn't just blood. It's also lymph, and lymph is this. Uh, the best way to keep it is the best way to put it is just a light like a like greenish fluid that helps uh, maintain different immune um, helps keep your body in I guess the best way to put it is it helps keep your body not sick it's a lot more complicated and we'll get into that but the bare bones uh, the layman's terms it helps keep your body not sick um, whenever you go to the doctors when you're sick they might press on your neck and that's because you have lymph nodes right in your neck and they swell up whenever you're sick. Uh, also, if your lymph nodes aren't working properly, you might pee, see uh, a little bit older people with swelling in their feet. That is edema. That's when there's a buildup of lymphatic fluid. And then your digestive system. Now, this one's pretty straightforward. Your digestive system is responsible for taking in 
uh, breaking down and absorbing nutrients from food. And then it's also removal, uh, responsible for removing solid waste, otherwise known as feces or poop, from the body. Your urinary system, same way. It filters and removes liquid waste from the body, and it helps regulate electrolyte and fluid balance in the body. And then finally, your reproductive system. Now, your reproductive system is what allows for human beings to have children. In females, it makes sure that your eggs stay fertilized in the arteries. And in males, it makes sure that uh, sperm stays alive and can go and fertilize the female. Uh, males produce sperm and females produce eggs.